I survived 100 days in Hardcore Better Minecraft Plus. My goals were to take down three bosses. The Netherite Monstrosity, the Ender Guardian, and the Void Worm. Day one, just like regular Minecraft, I collected some wood to make the basic tools. Good thing I was right in front of a massive structure, so I also upgraded to stone tools really quickly. Then I made my way over to an abandoned house, but some creature let out a huge roar. I quickly grabbed the books and all the random stuff on the first floor and went up to the attic. The chest in here had 10 iron ingots and iron leggings. After equipping whatever I could, I made an iron pickaxe, some bread, torches, and a shield. When I tried to leave the house, I noticed an overworld drake right in front of me. So to outsmart it, I stayed under the door and slowly lowered its health until it eventually died. After that, I went my merry way until I saw some invisible skeletons. It took a little bit to defeat these guys, they were really tough. I then made my way towards the structure to see what was up. Turns out there were even more invisible skeletons, so I hid and slowly took these guys out too. The good thing is that these chests were really nice. I got an iron chest plate and even more iron. After almost dying, I went to the other side to loot that chest too. This is where I got two diamonds and more food. Then I went to the top floor and killed the final skeleton here. The final chest was also really nice. I got a sharpness one iron sword and some extra iron tools. With all the loot, I decked myself out in iron armor and cooked the food and went to sleep. Once I woke up, I made a bucket and went out to explore some more. I ran through a very colorful biome and found this rundown structure. These look like graves, so I dug them up and it turned out to be really good chests. They contained golden apples, enchanted books, coal, bone, and more importantly, enchanted armor. I also fully lucked out and got a mending diamond helmet. If that wasn't cool enough, I also got Icy Thorns 4 on my chest plate. No clue what that does. Yeah, this place basically filled up my inventory with tons of loot, so I went inside to see what was up in there. This place was really scary though. Uh, turns out there was a basement also here, but I wanted to check out the top floors first. I cleared some bookshelves and found a chest hidden behind them. Then after all of that, I went to the attic which had strings and a chest, which I used to make a backpack for all the junk that I had collected. I also had tons of iron so I was able to upgrade the backpack to the iron version. Then with all this new space I went straight down to the basement to check out the situation. This urn had some really rare items which I snatched up and I found a mending bow in the barrel. The other barrel had a flame bow and then I freed the two villagers that were trapped here as well. The next day I made a boat and went out to explore again. I ended up finding a wizard's tower. I collected everything I could and I started making my way up the tower and broke these bookshelves. It turned out that this place was trapped with TNT. The main chest also had tons of enchanted books. The best ones being mending and whatever this life mending thing was. On the way out, I found this crazy bird which shot its feather at me. And I stumbled into a pillager outpost. This place was filled to the brim with pillagers. And they were tearing my shield up. So I had to make a new one. And also, they did tons of damage so I had to eat my golden apples. I managed to fight them all night. And I even got attacked by this OP enderman which I had to place the water down just to survive. Once the enderman disappeared, I had a new challenger. This absolute tank of a skeleton. Lucky for me, it was very stupid and I hid behind blocks taking shots until it was weak enough to take out. The reward though was incredible. I got a protection 7 iron chest plate. Now that I was better equipped, I went to ruin this pillager outpost. Uh yeah, turns out they were still kind of strong, so I retreated, made a sleeping bag, and went to sleep. Day 5, it was time for a different strategy. I mined some cobblestone to make some furnaces, and then I chopped down this tree for sticks. I needed to cook some more food and remake some iron armor though. Once I stocked up, I went right back to the outpost. This time, it was no mercy. I managed to take them all out on the bottom floor and even remake made my shield. Then I went into the tower and the first chest had these things called tattered tomes and like a bunch of other random stuff. The next floor had even more food plus some arrows and the top floor basically had the same stuff. I got tons of wheat, carrots, and some iron. I used these tomes to get like 8 levels and plus you can turn these things right back into paper. Then that night I found this really weird ocean monument structure which had a portal frame in the center. After waking up I realized I had the bad omen effect so I ran to find some cows. Then after running through this entire swamp I found another one of those creepy houses. These places tend to have tons of really good loot so I was already filling up my backpack really quickly. The upstairs chest had the best loot ever, a mending diamond chest plate. But for right now the protection 7 iron chest plate is still better. Also there was an efficient see 8 diamond shovel in the same chest. The bottom floor had diamond leggings so I was already getting kinda stacked. That night I left to find a nice area to build a house. I actually managed to find a village and fought a bunch of mobs. There also turned out to be another underground village right next to this village too which I obviously went down to explore. Down here I found some iron blocks, made an anvil and then I grabbed some stone to make a grindstone. I tried to disenchant the iron chest plate but it didn't really work on this update. I also just kept the iron chest plate on which turned out to be a good choice since I met this very OP mob. Bob. I was able to block this dude named Bob over here and I took him out. My reward was a sharpness 5 iron sword. 
and the chests in Bob's lair were filled with some really nice loot like the Slayer 4 and Mending Sword. I used the anvil to combine them together and make one super sword. While exploring this underground village some more, I found another one of these OP mobs. So with some quick thinking, I trapped this guy as well. This time I shredded through the mob and got even more OP loot. This chest also had a Protection 4 book and with all the gold, I upgraded my backpack into a gold backpack. Turns out there were two more of these OP mobs here. The first one was easy to take out and the second one had a bow. So I had to keep my shield up and take this dude out slowly. The reward was a power 4 flame bow with a special ability. Day 8, I combined the mending bow with this new bow and then I got out of this village. Well, I ended up finding another underground village and of course I jumped right in. Then you guessed it, there was another one of those OP guys here. After taking this one out, I got an even better chest plate. I tried to combine the two chest plates together but it took way too many levels. While I was down here, I got caught in a trap and these ores were all part of this huge TNT trap. I still got the diamonds though at least, but I was super lucky that I had incredible armor. I then somehow fought another one of these OP dudes and got an insanely good shield. Day 9 to 10, I was out to find a place to live again. I found this protection 8 iron chest plate and then went down to this dungeon. This place was packed with tons of zombies and the bottom floor had tons of spawners as well. I went around destroying all these spawners but there were already tons of zombies that were already spawned. There were also a bunch of chests here which had some really good loot like golden apples and enchanted books. So from breaking all those spawners I had tons of spirit orbs that I got from them and I had found this goddess statue where you can deposit these orbs to get more hearts. After that, I went to the other side of the dungeon and collected more orbs, killed more zombies, and looted more and more chests. That was until I met this fully diamond out OP mob. I was really careful and slowly started attacking this beast. I managed to block it in and I was able to fully take it out and my reward was an insane diamond helmet, which I combined with my current mending one to perfect it. Then I used the rest of my spirit orbs to get even more health and the dungeon was fully cleared at this point. So I left and then a blood wound happened that night, so I hid out in this little dirt shack. As the mobs from last night burned, I accidentally started a raid in this village. I really wasn't ready to take on these pillagers, so I went up this tower instead and grabbed the paraglider plus the waystone. I then jumped down gliding on the paraglider until my stamina was running out. After that, I went up this hill and noticed a dragon's nest, but no dragon, which was a bad sign. Since this windmill was on fire, I knew the dragon was near, so I ran the other way and glided towards this mesa biome. Around the mesa, I found another one of those zombie dungeons, but I was more in the mood of trying to find a nice place to live. While moving around, I found a huge bone structure with husk spawners inside and some emerald blocks. There was also a pillager outpost right next to me, which I cleared, and then the next morning, I went across the ocean and finally found the perfect place to live. Day 14 to day 15, I cleared out an entire area from all the shrubs and replaced this meadow grass with regular grass. But that's when tragedy struck. I recorded 40 minutes of making the house and every time I tried to open it, my game would crash. So I can only show you the almost finished project. It was basically all stone and oak wood, very simple design. I still need to fill the walls and windows in though. To fill out the empty spots, I made more stone bricks and just placed a simple pattern around the house. Then to fill the holes, I needed more sand to make glass panes. Then once more stone were smelted, I filled out the other sides and made some cool looking doors. After that, I went to collect some squid ink. With that, I was able to make tons of black stained glass panes and filled every spot with that. I also started a mine for more stone and I made a pathway. This process took really long because I was looking for more squid ink while gathering even more stone. Eventually, I had most of the house done and made some bookshelves which I placed on the top floor. Then I needed a storage area, so for now, I just used the bottom floor to place all of my junk. To finally solidify this as my base, I set this goddess statue down and then the waystone down. For the rest of these days, I sprinkled lanterns around and placed a grindstone and an anvil near the enchantment setup. I also really tried looking for more squid ink, but no luck. Instead, I made an enchantment table. Day 18 to 19, I used some diamonds to make boots and a pickaxe. I enchanted the pickaxe and got a pretty nice enchantment. The boots also got some really good enchants too. I had a looting three sword, which I combined with my old sword to enhance my super sword. Then to make the base nicer, I bone meal the flat area around my house. Also, this way I can get purple dye from the lavenders. After the housework, I gathered my gold and apples and found an underground village right next to my base. I ended up finding one of those OP mobs again and swiftly took them down. Again, I got some more really good armor pieces plus a really nice bowl. Aside from that, there was nothing else here, so I went to hunt more squids. 
I'm pretty sure since these dolphins were here, they killed the squids before I could. I really needed the black knife for the windows. Lucky for me, in the morning, I found tons of squids, and with looting three, I got even more squidding. Now I was able to make tons of black stained glasses and finally finish the house. Also, just out of impulse, I started upgrading the storage system. I made tons of these tier two chests, which hold way more items. Then I started working on the remote storage system by making network cables and link cables. I linked all the chests together and then made a nether portal since I would need some quartz blocks. I then teleported into the nether and got a really weird spawn, but I got some quartz really quickly. It also turns out that I'm in front of a stalwart fortress. I got attacked by these little mushroom guys and I went to check out what this fortress was actually like. I almost got a heart attack, but even though these mobs looked cool, they weren't that strong. These blazes also always drop blaze rods, which is going to be really handy. After the fighting, I ended up in the loot room and these chests were really nice. They were filled with diamonds, gold, iron, emeralds, and nether warts. I then somehow ended up in the basement of this fortress, which was very maze-like and had tons of spawners. There were also tons of chests here and I picked up a bunch of good loot. Before I left though, I actually found in more quartz and then it came back home. I used the quartz to make a storage system route and then I needed to make one more thing to be able to access the storage system. To get what I needed, I went down to the mines and found that one trap which had gotten me before. But this time I didn't step on the pressure plate. I gathered every ore here and then made my way right back up. I was able to make a storage inventory and ultimately a storage request table so I can access all of my chests from one place. Now that the basics were set up, I made more tier 2 chests and placed those in the storage system for more space. Then last but not least, I needed to make the remote. The last ingredient I needed was glowstone dust, so I dove straight into the nether again. I built up pretty quickly, gathered tons of glowstone, and then popped right back home. This really wasn't the remote I wanted, but it'll have to do for now. I then connected it to the storage route and then force loaded my chunks, so I should be able to access these chests from everywhere. With all that set up, I started a weed farm. I built the outline with cobblestone and sprinkled water all around. Then to make sure mobs don't drop in, I placed walls, slabs, and more blocks blocks around the perimeter for more texture and of course safety. Once morning came, I hoed all the land inside and replaced a bunch of cobblestone for stone and stone walls. Then I topped it off with a fence gate. Oh yeah, and the main reason for the wheat farm is to actually plant the seeds, which of course I did. Plus I used a bunch of bone meal to fill out as much of the farm as I can. Later that night, I killed this mob, which gave me a pretty stacked shield. I spent the next day making warp scrolls because I couldn't find any endermen to make the warp stone. And I disenchanted some armor that I wasn't gonna use. I also have some mending books which I used on my boots and I slept in the house for the first time ever. Day 25, I picked a direction and went off to explore. I then noticed on the minimap that I was right above a boss. So I dug straight down to take this boss on. It took me a little bit to find the dude's lair, but it turned out to be the fairest rot knot. I made a little panic shelter and then went to swing at this behemoth. Once it woke up, it swung its giant axe and threw me across the room. It was taking tons of health down, so I had to go to the panic shelter and eat my enchanted golden apple. Now that I was healing a little, I waited for this monster to do its big swings, so the back was exposed, which was its weak point. I'd gotten it down to half health, but I'm stupid, and this thing ended up healing right back because I was in my panic shelter. Luckily, my shield was indestructible, so I was able to block a bunch of major attacks, and slowly but surely, with the help of these gapples, I was able to take down the ferrous rot knot. It did take all but one enchanted golden apple, though. The reward was an unbreakable helmet and axe. The axe? For sure, I'm keeping. There were also quest rewards, which gave me another really cool axe, but this one wasn't indestructible. Then later that night, I found a witch's tower that had a nice enchantment set up. So I placed one more bookshelf on here, grabbed some lapis, and enchanted my diamond leggings. Right after the witch tower, I went to find another tower, and this place had what I needed, tomes of scrapping, which can remove enchantments. The main chest had some insane leggings which I was definitely going to take the affix from and after exploring some more I found this graveyard structure again where I took whatever I needed and I found another tower which meant more tomes and affix books. I then ransacked this monastery and found a map for Thornborn Towers which I went to follow. Along the way I got attacked by a cyclops and activated another waystone on a tower. Day 28, after running through a desert, I ended up gliding towards Barako the Sun Chief's village. I quickly dropped down into the water and took out his minions. Once I saw the chief, I lit him up with the arrows and knocked him into phase 2. The chief was healing from the minions and after taking them out, I rushed Barako and easily took him out. My reward was a mask and a totem of undying. I also found another waystone here too. As if things couldn't get crazier, I found a dragon's nest. Not just any dragon, a lightning dragon. This one wasn't too big, so I started dumping arrows towards it. Once it caught on fire, I ate my gapple and took this dragon on toe-to-toe. -to -toe. 
I picked up the scales and bones and then went forward following the map. That night I found a ruined battle tower and went to the top floor which had blocks of iron and gold just laying there. Day 29, I realized the Thornborn Towers would be way too far, so I just came back home and first order of business was to harvest all the wheat I had and fill out the entire farm. Then I chopped down a bunch of trees to make even more tier 2 chests which would expand my storage system even more. I also enchanted the new axe and got efficiency 3 on it. So because I also collected those tomes of scrapping, I looked through all of my enchanted armor to see what I could disenchant. And oh yeah, I picked up my quest rewards for the lightning dragon, which was a sapphire dragon egg. I'll have to hatch that later. For right now, I made a dragon scale chest plate and leggings and then spent the night killing mobs so I could get up to level 30 and enchant these new pieces. Day 30 to day 32, my silk touch pickaxe allowed me to get spawners and I managed to get a zombie spawner. So to make use of it, I went down to the mines to build a 9x9 area for all the zombies to spawn. Once the main area was complete, I made the killing chamber where all the zombies would drop into. I placed a hopper down and some chests to gather the loot. Then to finally top it off, I placed a sign right on top of the chamber and broke all the torches. I placed a waystone down right next to the mob spawner and now this whole farm is fully operational. I also started decorating the area by placing stone bricks on the floor and placing these oak logs as support beams. When mining out the walls, I dug right into the mines which made it way easier to go back and forth. Last but not least, I placed some stone brick stairs and lanterns around the chamber. I then placed a fence so baby zombies don't sneak through and then I fixed up the mine entrance. On the way down I placed even more stone brick stairs too. The weed farm was also working super nicely so I made an automatic composter for all the leftover seeds. To end these days off I had enough levels to enchant the dragon scale armor pieces and the chest plate had protection 3 and projectile protection 4. The leggings had protection 4 and fire protection 4. I used one mending book for the leggings and then scrapped my diamond leggings and put that book on the chest plate. And of course I finally put a mending book on the chest plate as well. I wanted to scrap my iron chest plate so I made more tomes and then went down to the spawner to get some more XP. I spent a good little bit grinding the mobs out and I noticed I got tons of rotten flesh. I moved the rotten flesh to the other chest too. I got up to level 21 and looked through my inventory for more armor to scrap. I picked one with protection 8 and tried putting that on my dragon scale chest plate but I needed even more levels. After grinding out tons more zombies, I made a little area for a cleric villager to be right next to the spawners. This way I could trade rotten flesh. But to grab the villager, I needed to go down to the mines and get some arcane crystal blocks. I actually ended up getting a decent amount of them. Day 34, since my pickaxe was silk touch, I placed them all outside of my house and made another pickaxe to mine it. I got exactly 9 and made an arcane crystal block. Then I combined it with some spawner scrap to make a quantum catcher. Now I was able to kidnap a villager and placed it right behind my brewing stand. I used like 8 stacks of rotten flesh to get like 15 emeralds. Anyway, I had tons of emerald blocks and I had started advancing the villagers trades first by buying lapis and then trading the rabbit's foot I had collected. Last but not least, I also bought tons of ender pearls, which is exactly what I needed to make a warp stone for myself. I then got up to level 23, I put the protection 8 book on my chest plate and since I had collected tons of silk touch blocks, I mined them all. The rest of the night I made glass bottles and brewed potions of fire resistance which I put in my backpack. Oh yeah, and some mob dropped a banner which I placed on my shield. Day 35, the goal was simple, make these hell shelf things. First I drank my potions of fire resistance and then I went over to this stalwart fortress to grab loads of nether bricks. I then came right back home and started making tons of glass bottles which needed to be turned into potions of regeneration. Lucky for me, I had tons of gas tears. With all that set up, I made my first 5 hell shelves. So I removed some of the old bookshelves and placed these bad boys instead. With 5 of these, I could already enchant with 35 levels instead of 30. I spent the rest of this day making even more potions of regeneration, grabbing more sand for glass and chopping down trees for bookshelves just to fill out the enchantment area with hell shelves. It was all worth it though since now I can enchant tools with 42 levels instead of 30. The only issue now was getting the levels, which is why the mob grinder is a lifesaver. Day 36 to day 37, I teleported around to the waypoints I had discovered and I found a tower which had even more gold and iron blocks for me. Then I found this tower where I got more tomes and the top chest had a sword with a cool affix. I went into a Miramex colony and the only thing that was there was the queen, so I took care of that very easily. I then found even more tomes and enchanted books and then the next morning I fought this tank in diamond armor. This fight took a little bit but I got some insane diamond boots and a diamond chest plate. While exploring some more I ransacked the village for their food and picked up this empty spawner then came back home. Since I'd also picked up this enderman spawn egg, I had the idea of making an enderman spawner but obviously it wouldn't work in this cave since there's water down there. Instead I doubled up the zombie spawner to 
increased the rate and boy did it work. There were now more zombies flooding through. So while grinding these mobs out, I had a wither bone which I used to make a dragon bone sword. I then got up to level 32 and combined two of my boots together. Day 38, I grinded up to level 19 again and then I had a genius idea. I just needed a knowledge of the ages book. So I grabbed a lectern and set up an area to place the villager in for now. Of course, I had to kidnap the locals and bring them back to the chamber. Once I trapped this guy, I was in a really weird position since I got a mending trade. But for now, I think it was better to get the knowledge of the ages trade. It took a little bit of rolling, but I managed to get knowledge of the ages 4, which means mob drops turn into XP. I quickly grabbed this book and went to put it on my sword. I picked the dragonbone sword to put it on since the enchantment already gave me looting too. Now I was getting loads of XP every time one zombie died. In about no time I got up to level 46 but I kept going until I got up to level 60. With all this new XP I made another dragon bone sword and wanted to make this one OP. So I rolled through a few enchantments until I got a sharpness 5 one with bane of the illagers. After that I enchanted some books and went right back to grinding levels. Then I hit level 60 again, enchanted this new pickaxe and got fortune 2 and efficiency 5. Then I enchanted a book and got looting 2 which I combined with a mending book and put that on the new dragon bone sword. A 39 to 40 I grinded more levels obviously and traded some gold to the cleric. I then got up to level 64 and enchanted tons of books. I also placed these skulls on the bookshelves and I grinded for more levels and mined down lower to get some ores. I used my potions of fire resistance and basically mined every single thing I could. I ended up with a huge haul of just random stuff and this tellerite piece. Before I stopped mining I tore through this amethyst geode. Once I came home I made even more chests to fit into the storage system and I smelted basically everything I collected. Then, with some spare emeralds, I wanted to advance this librarian's trades, so I started buying some bookshelves and lanterns. To end these days off, I made a few obsidian with iron and turned those into obsidian ingots and all of that into an obsidian skull. Luckily, I had a stellarite piece, but I needed one more expectrified orb, so I went back down to the mines and ended up finding the last one I needed. With all of that, I made an eternal stella and combined that with the obsidian skull to get permanent fire resistance. Now, I wanted a new bow so I made a dragon bone bow and got really lucky on the enchantment. I put infinity on it, but I didn't know that regular arrows don't work with a dragon bone bow. After that, I grabbed some ender pearls from my cleric and went into the nether. The first thing I checked out was this new structure. So this was a stalwart dungeon and it was filled with these reinforced blazes and incomplete wither skeletons. The blazes dropped tons of weird ingots and I picked up some of these tungsten ore too. The real kicker here were these incomplete withers who always managed to drop wither skeleton heads. So this gave me a great idea. I silk touched two incomplete wither skeleton spawners that I wanted to farm. I then killed tons more blazes and found the center where there was an alpha gas altar that needed a nether star to activate. Once I was done with the dungeon, I ender pearled around looking for more cool structures. I ended up in this piglin tower thing which was filled with piglin brutes and tons of gold blocks. I also made the dragonborn arrow somewhere around here. From one of these structures alone, I got like 16 gold blocks and the top floor had 5 more gold blocks and a netherite ingot. After that, I found a nether boat, which had even more gold blocks in the bottom floor. I got a piglin divinity gem. From this one trip, I got like 40 gold blocks. And I found a waystone, which I used to come back home. Day 44 to day 45, I removed my nether portal and smelted tons of tungsten ore to make the armor. Then all that gold was used to get even more emeralds from the cleric. While I was down here, I got the idea to make an oceanographer. This way I could get tons of sea lantern and make the crafting remote instead of the basic remote I had. After that, I placed these incomplete wither skeleton spawners instead of the zombie spawners and made the killing chamber one block higher. I basically killed a few of these skeletons and I already had 13 wither skeleton heads. These dudes had some insane loot. I now basically have infinite wither skeleton heads and coal. Also, the knowledge of the Aegis sword is now even more overpowered. After a whole day of grinding, I got up to level 84 with like two stacks of wither skeleton heads. I had enough wither skeleton heads for an entire lifetime, so I removed those spawners for now and I teleported far away to build a new nether portal here. I ended up spawning right next to another stalwart dungeon so I mined as many tungsten ores as I could see. The enchanted books here were also really good so I grabbed a bunch of those as well. I then stumbled into another nether ship and got 21 more gold blocks. While moving some more I found another nether waystone and saw a mutant wither skeleton underneath me who died from like 3 shots with my bow. So I got this cool withered claymore. Then after some more traveling I realized that I have close to a hundred gold blocks in storage. So I then set my sights towards the netherite monstrosity and traveled for a real long time. 
As I went across this nether waste biome, my health bar popped up over me. I looted and got on top of this tower to get a better view of what the netherite monstrosity looked like. I couldn't see anything, so I built down towards the structure until it came out. Immediately, this monster started launching magma blocks and I had to grab my golden apples. I managed to get some hits in, but it kept deactivating my shield, so I had to be really careful. This guy was ferocious, but once I realized that it was kind of weak to arrows, I managed to do tons of damage and eventually, after keeping my distance and eating the apples, I took down the netherite monstrosity. This behemoth dropped a hammer called Infernal Forge and a monstrous horn. I then picked up the leftover ancient debris and collected my quest reward, which was a nether star. So I came back home, rebuilt the portal in front of my house, and I wanted to take on this awful ghast while I was here. I made my way over to the center of the dungeon and placed the nether star into the altar. Then the awful gas summoned. At first, I thought how hard can this boss be, but my god. This thing keeps disabling all of your weapons and I had to retreat. While I was out here, I found out that you could just cheese the boss very easily, so I took it down using my bow. The reward was this thing called an awful gun. I also grabbed all the tungsten ore here as well. I couldn't end it there, I needed to fight one more boss, and this one was the wither. I went very deep underground, cleared an area to fight this wither. I summoned this bad boy and lasered it with my bow, and in no time I managed to defeat this guy too. My reward was also a nether star and a heart container which I can't even use because I maxed out on hearts, and I ended up getting a witherite ingot. To end these days, I made a full set of tungsten armor and I started enchanting it. I got protection 4 on the helmet, protection 3 on the chest plate, and protection 4 on the boots and the leggings. Then I made a tungsten shield which looks sick but can only have the unbreaking enchantment. I actually realized that my diamond armor was just so much better than the tungsten stuff, so I made netherite ingots instead and upgraded the helmets and boots. So the cool thing you can do with the netherite helmet and the monstrous horn is to combine them together to make the monstrous helm, which was even cooler. So for the tungsten armor, I just placed it on the armor stand since I'm probably not going to use them at all. I decided I'm going to keep this helmet and that means everything else has to match, which means I enchanted this diamond armor and scrapped the enchantments off the dragon scale armor to put on the diamond ones instead. I also had a mending book for the chest plate and I turned it into a netherite chest plate. Then I needed more levels to scrap the dragon scale leggings so it was time to grind even more levels. I ended up getting up to level 47 and scrapped everything off the dragon stuff and moved it to the diamond stuff. I also put mending on it too. I then got up to level 49 again and wanted to remove some of the affixes from this crazy iron armor. The next day I got up to level 50 and put the mythic affix on my chest plate. After that I made tons of tomes to use my levels. I also got up to like 70 levels and I tried to get really good in chance. The best one was the sharpness 5 and looting 3 that I used. Then I went to the nether to get some netherite to upgrade my leggings. I tore up these piglin tower things grabbing all the gold and hoping I'd get netherite ingots or scraps on the top chest. I ended up getting one on the first tower and then came right back home to upgrade my leggings. Now things are fully uniform. Last but not least, I put looting 4 on my sword and sold tons of gold and then I realized I had more than 100 pieces of gold blocks. Day 51 to day 52, I made a tool belt plus some pouches to store my equipment and then I upgraded my backpack to a diamond backpack and I also wanted to make this thing called a feeding upgrade so I got some of these melons from the underground village and I made one plus the advanced version. Now as long as food is in the backpack I would automatically be fed. With that finished I had the genius idea to find a vindicator spawner since they always drop emeralds. I knew that there are spawners on pirate ships so I went out searching for some. Along the way I killed some sirens and got attacked by sea serpents back to back and what saved me was my OP bow. There were way too many mobs here so I slept on this slime island and the next morning I actually found a pirate ship. I crawled onto it, destroyed the archers and then I took the spawner with my silk touch pickaxe. To add insult to injury, I burned this place down and moved to another pirate ship. This place also had a vindicator spawner which I took and burnt this ship down too. Now I was able to place the vindicator spawner on the farm and get unlimited emeralds. I mean this thing was working like a charm. In a few minutes I already had a stack of emeralds which I used to level this librarian up, but its trades kinda sucked. I ended these days off by putting Sweeping Edge 3 on my Dragon Bone Sword. With the new influx of emeralds, I started to prepare a trading hall. This was going to be right across the mob killing chamber and filled with tons of unique new villagers. The first thing I did was dig out little areas for the villagers to be placed in and then I put oak pillars around it to give it some more color. After that I fixed up the roof by raising it a little and then I put oak logs across it. After all of that, I put magma blocks underneath where the villager workshops are going to be and I placed glowstone all around the center for lighting. The first residents were obviously my librarian and my cleric. I wasn't really happy with the floor so I went and grabbed a bunch of deep slate and started messing with that. I filled out the floors with deep slate tile slabs and deep slate brick slabs which looked nice but were too neat so I randomized them a little. I like this design so much that I made the killing chamber floor the same thing too. 
The final thing I did was fix the back wall and match the ceilings up. After that, I just started filling up the trading hall with a bunch of villagers. First guy was an oceanographer, the second villager was a weaponsmith, the fourth was a farmer, and on the other side, I put another librarian plus a hunter. This time, I was also leveling up the guys as well, and I ended up getting a mending trade. Day 56 to day 58, I made a stairway all the way down to bedrock and I collected some cold deep stone, which took me way too long to get. I then used all of my spirit orbs to max out on the paragliding stamina, which apparently is a big deal, and I made a light and dark chest, which I placed on bedrock. This way I could go to the deep dark dimension. It just took one diamond. I had this cool remote that shows you where these mobs are, which is really helpful because I'm trying to get tons of diamonds and kill all the wardens here. After collecting some diamonds in the spawn room, I followed the silhouettes of these mobs until I reached a cave. Inside the cave, I got even more diamonds and ended up alerting a warden. I stayed on top of these few blocks and I was able to take down this regular version of the warden without losing any health. Almost immediately, another warden saw me and oh my god, this guy packed a punch. It basically took most of my hearts every single hit. I tried to climb out these blocks, but I was blinded. Eventually, after slowly hitting this warden, I took out the big warden type, but I almost died. There was one more variant here, which was the bone type, and this one was nowhere near as bad because I managed to get it on high ground, and just like that, I completed the entire deep dark dimension in like 30 minutes. The reward was a netherite ingot, and I got a bunch of the ores that I mined here too. I then came home, placed pedestals around the main bedroom, and then put some cool artifacts and rewards down on top of the pedestals and the armor stands. Day 59, I unlocked this chainsaw trade from the other librarian and I put it on my giant axe. Now I can tear these trees apart from one log. I also basically got master trades from all the other villagers. Day 60 to day 61, I turned these piglin divinity gems into piglin divinity essences and went to the nether to grab even more netherite. I prowled around the nether looking for the structures that give those netherite ingots. I found a tower first and got a netherite ingot plus tons more gold blocks and then I made it to a ship which had even more gold blocks and then finally a second ship Ship where I managed to get some extra netherite scrap and an ingot. I made one too many of these divinity nether ingots, but I upgraded all of my armor except the helmet to the divinity netherite version, which just makes it stronger and matches to the sick helmet even more. I also made a bunk bed because I'm no longer a peasant now. Day 62 to day 64, I grabbed the waystone and went to find a stronghold. This ended up taking a few days, but eventually I found the stronghold, which was underwater. I broke in through a staircase and started looting these barracks for every single thing they had. It was just a lot of foods and sticks. I ended up finding the treasure room where I snatched everything up and then eventually found the portal room. I placed the waystone down and made more eyes of ender to finish the portal. Before I jumped in, I came right back home to make more golden apples and then get some more ender pearls. I then enchanted a new pickaxe, which I combined with my old one and added mending to it. Now that I was fully set up, I teleported to the end portal and jumped in. I spawned on a platform and built up until I could pearl to the main island. Then I started raining arrows at the crystals. Some of them were highly protected, so I got the ones that were exposed first. Once most of the crystals were gone, I pearled up to the tower and started destroying some of the protected ones. With that, it was just me versus the dragon and my bow did tons of damage, basically reducing its health down to half until it perched again. This cycle, I managed to get it to a third of its health and then I took it out using the bow. I picked up like 8 dragon skills and got the ender dragon egg. Now came the annoying part of finding the end city. This is also why the ender pearls were very important. I built over to the end gateway and then checked my quest rewards, which gave me a black dragon egg. Also, one of the quests was to defeat a mutant enderman, and lucky for me, there was one right here. This guy was a freak though, doing more damage than the ender dragon. I had to eat my golden apple, but I tanked it and took this guy down. The reward was a nether star, and then I went onwards to find the end cities. For the next few days, I prowled around looking for any structure, and I ended up finding one, which had tons of shulker boxes filled with some insane loot. Basically, every enchantment you could want on a piece of gear plus void totems and these orbs of temporary flight. After basically forever, I found an end city, but no end ship. I still started making my way up the tower though, breaking these shulker spawners and looting these stacked chests. I got to the top floor and got even more shulker boxes, void totems, and enchanted gear. I did however get this Eye of Nebula Soul Stone, which seemed way too complicated since it teleported me out. A while later, I found another end city and went directly up to the end ship and picked up the elytra wings. I also got whatever was good in the chests, made some fireworks, and flew back to the main island. Before I left, I wanted to collect tons of endstone, and as soon as I got home, I made a purple altar so I could get an endarian villager. 
Day 71, I started trying to hatch this ice dragon egg and I didn't have any more dragon bones to keep this thing safe, so I made the quantum catchers again. I also made an eternal Stella and put that on my elytra so it's indestructible now. While waiting, I made tons of dragon meals and fed this dragon as soon as it hatched. And I snatched this little guy up to keep him safe. After that, I leveled up this Endurian to unlock the firework trade and eventually the dragon breath trade. With that, I could make a bunch of end shelves, so I upgraded from the hell shelves to the end shelves. This meant that I could enchant items with 80 levels. I ended up getting some nice enchantments on a spear sword and put knowledge of ages on another sword. After that I grinded a bunch more levels so that I can use level 80 enchants and it was not good at all. So instead I made the trading hall a few blocks wider so that I could sneak in two more villagers. One of the guys I needed was a scribe because I thought they sold dragon bones. While I was traveling to another village I met a fire dragon. This dude had already noticed me so I swapped to the bow and started firing. It took only a few arrows and I managed to take it out. This time I grabbed my glass bottles to take the blood. As if that wasn't enough while flying some more I landed on an ice dragon's nest. Now these guys are super annoying since they slow you down to a crawl. But I still managed to take it out and grab the scales. With these bones, I made a dragon horn and placed my dragon in there instead. I also grabbed the quest rewards, which was a gem that bounded dragons to you and a wand. Then I noticed a forest on fire and saw another dragon, but this one was very different. It was a royal red dragon. Oh yeah, I found this stupid lectern, which makes scribes. And here's where I messed up a little. I disenchanted my leggings and got some really nice enchantments, but it had life mending, which I thought worked just like mending, but it did not repair my armor at all. I had no idea so I did the same thing to my chest plate as well and it had some really good enchants but no mending. Then I went to fight mobs and realized that these pieces were not healing at all. I found these weird underwater creatures named Mother of the Maze and then I found the Thornborn Towers where I took all the loot on the top floor. Last but not least I found a shipwreck where I got the shell horn. This horn allowed me to summon the ghost of Captain Cornelia and just the way this boss moved and attacked was super cool. The ice floor would constantly raise and launch me back but at the end of the day it wasn't nearly strong enough to handle me and I took it out without losing much health. My reward was a cool helmet and a submarine. Day 76 to day 77 my armor was torn up so I put some mending books on them and then I wanted to take on these ender golems next. So I looked up the ruined citadel on my explorer's compass and flew over to it. I reached the citadel and fought these weird bugs and then when I made it inside I kept stepping on these trapped blocks. I eventually found these golems and I thought it was the boss since it had some really cool moves and its own chamber. But after I took it out I realized it was just the beginning. I looted all the chests around and found these trap doors which led underground. And yeah it turns out those golems are protecting something way bigger because I had to fight about two more of them. My hunch was right because I found some more trap doors and dropped even lower. Turns out this was the altar for the elder guardian and this guy had all the moves of the ender golems plus double health. I tried using my bow but eventually that stopped working so I went head first and started slicing at the monster. I slowly got it at half health and it broke the platform we were standing on and knocked us down to the bottom floor. But for now it was way too weak. I was able to fly away from its pull and start lighting it up with the arrows to kill it. The reward was a gauntlet of guard and I got this larva plus something called a capsid. These are needed to summon the void worm, the last boss of the end. Before I came home I grabbed some more elytra wings and random loot in this end city. Day 78 to 80 I needed to put these wither skeleton heads to use and I summoned even more withers. I summoned them back to back and took each out until I had like 6 nether stars. I also kidnapped this little goblin who I used to get a fortune 5 pickaxe and combined it with my pickaxe. After that I expanded my storage system with tier 3 chests for even more storage and I realized I wanted dragon bone tools instead so that's exactly what I did. I started enchanting these dragon bone tools but I needed more levels so I got up to level 65 and started trading with this scribe who was a scam artist. But on the bright side I got up to level 89, enchanted my dragon bone pickaxe and combined it with an unbreaking and mending book. Because I was so indecisive I made a flame dragon bone sword and rolled the enchants for this thing like a hundred times. I even had a pretty good setup but I didn't like the bane of villagers. So after combining tons of these books I realized it had knowledge of the ages which I did not want at all. So this amazingly beautiful sword had to be disenchanted. Day 81 I spent this entire day grinding levels and got some sick enchantments on the flame dragon bone sword. Only problem was the bane of arthropods. I really didn't want to grind levels again so I enchanted some tomes and combined those books on this sword to make an absolute super sword. Day 82 to day 83 I went to the nether to collect more gold and netherite scraps and also hopefully find a mutant blaze. This elytra helped me reach tons of places I never could and the gold from these structures were insane. I'm pretty sure I can build a few beacons with just the gold blocks alone. 
soon. I started with around 170 gold blocks and ended with more than 300. With all this new gold, I got another cleric to sell more gold into, and I made a netherite shield which I upgraded to blazerite, and then got some really decent enchants on the shield. I still had to combine it with some leftover books to make it perfect. Day 84 to day 88, for these days I flew around these ice biomes looking for dread dungeons. This is because they have dragonforge stuff in them. I found one of those dungeons and killed a dread lich who dropped a key. I was able to get into the dungeon, but my god was it packed with mobs. I swear these spawners were like supercharged because they really never stopped spawning. I was on the staircase thinning the herd for the longest time ever. I did manage to get down, break the spawners, and then come right back up, which worked like a charm. And then that meant I could go to the main room and pick up all the dragonforge blocks. I found another dread dungeon and did the exact same thing. This place was a nightmare, but I got through and picked up even more blocks and left. Later that day, I killed two ice dragons and got some more ice dragon blood. To finish these days off, I hunted tons of cows and sheep to make dragon meal and grow my ice dragon. Also to help with that, I made a pen for sheep. Before summoning the void worm, I wanted to level up my dragon first, so I started breeding the sheep like crazy. Then I made tons of backpack upgrades like this crafting upgrade and a stone cutter upgrade. Also, I turned the backpack into the netherite version as well. So the stone cutter has very useful features like you can turn these emerald blocks into these rough emerald shards, which fully restocks villagers. Using that, I was able to sell tons of gold and iron I had piled up. Then I fed my dragon some more with all the sheep. I also made the straw golem guy and a chest with a hopper to see how effective they were. They were useless. Then I had a great idea to remove a bunch of affixes from the loot I had been collecting. Day 91 to day 94, I learned how to summon the void worm. You put the larva into the capsid and it spits out a mysterious worm. After that, you need to drop this bad boy in the void. So I flew to the end and found the perfect place to start the fight. There weren't tons of endermen at the beginning, so I dropped the mysterious worm into the void. This summoned a portal which allowed the void worm to come through. This crazy boss did not stop attacking it, and once I shot it, it split into two. If that's not bad enough, I shot it again and it split into three. Luckily, I managed to just get the main worm by itself and then only took a few more shots to wipe out the void worm. My reward was a void worm eye and two void worm mandibles. These can be used to make a dimensional carver, which I have no clue what it does. The quest reward though opened up the abyss for me with tons of very useful information and blocks for the portal. To make this dimensional carver, I went to the nether one more time to get some netherite. Of course, I picked up all the gold I could. Then I made the dimensional carver, which was doing something when I right clicked, but I really couldn't tell at all. It just seemed useless to me. Day 95 to day 100. For the rest of these days, I bred my sheep and was able to feed my dragon until it was finally right. I also used all of my iron blocks to make some dragon armors to deck it out. Then I put a bunch of items on the pedestal and the armor stands. Last but not least, I cleared a huge area right in front of my house to hold six beacons. I spent most of the time collecting the extra emerald blocks. The first layer was gold, second was emeralds, third was iron, and the top layer I placed gold down again. Then of course I placed the six beacons on top and gave myself every single effect possible. If you want 200 days, make sure to let me know in the comments, I promise this time.